Hello and welcome to another part of the Explain Ash video tutorial. In this part I will talk about the active session history functionality. And actually since Explain Ash has evolved quite a bit since I started this video tutorial there is uh, actually more than just active session history. So before I dive into the details of what this uh, explanash output is supposed to mean. I thought it would make sense to uh, give you a little bit of an introduction how explanash is organized. As you hopefully know, explanash is a tool to analyze a single SQL statement execution. And if we talk about the active session history functionality of explanash, then the following data sources will actually be used by explanash. So obviously the majority of information will be taken from the active session history, which can be the V$ active session history current information. It can also be the AWR part, the DBA hist active session history, and it could even be a custom active session history re repository, which can be configured in explanash to be used. Then uh, some other information is also used by explanash that is uh, the execution plan details and the SQL text uh, which are again either taken from the library cache where it could also analyze the row source statistics but that's something for another part of this tutorial. Then uh, again the information could be taken from the AWR or again from a custom repository. And in the most recent releases of Xplan Ash, uh, even the real-time SQL monitoring information from the built-in V$ SQL monitor and V$ SQL plan monitor views can be analyzed and reported by Xplan Ash. But even that could be a custom repository, so if you have some custom jobs maybe that uh, somewhere uh, store the, the um, v, v$ SQL monitor or v$ SQL plan monitor information to some custom repository then uh, you could point explanash again to that custom repository. So these three data sources are basically the main inputs for the um, active session history based SQL execution analysis that explanash performs. Then um, there are various um, configuration parameters that you can use to control what explanash is supposed to do and one of these parameters uh, defines the so-called um, configuration set of explanash and there are a number of predefined configuration sets that come with the explanash script that you can download and th three of them are uh, these current mixed and historic configurations and uh, what does this mean? This means that these three parts that I just described in the previous slide, the active session history, the plan, execution plan and SQL text information and the real-time SQL monitoring information will be picked from different so so sources. So um, that's what I pointed out in the previous slide already. So the current configuration means that explain Ash uses V$ active session history for the Ash information, uses uh, V$ SQL plan and DBMS explain display cursor to show the execution plan details, picks the SQL text from V$ SQL stats and uses uh, V$ SQL monitor and plan monitor for getting real-time SQL monitoring information. Sometimes you might have the problem that um, the execution plan details are already aged out of the library cache and therefore cannot be um, shown any longer via DBMX explain display cursor. Uh, but maybe you already have this plan in the AWR. So in order to show you a meaningful execution plan details you can use then the mixed configuration instead we will, which will still pick active session history from the V$ active session history view 
but then uh, use DBA his SQL plan and DBMSX plan display 8WR to display the execution plan details and use DBA his SQL text to get SQL text information and obviously since there is no uh, change in the real-time SQL monitoring possible, it will still use VDOR SQL monitor and plan monitor for real-time SQL monitoring information. And the third configuration that is available then picks all this information from the AWR where possible, so it uses DBA hist active session history and then again the same DBA hist C SQL plan and so forth for showing the execution plan details. And it will also try and at least attempt to use uh, real-time SQL monitoring information but very likely if you're looking for some execution that was uh, several hours or s several days, maybe even several days ago then it's very likely that you won't see any uh, real-time SQL monitoring information in the built-in views. Maybe in your custom repository that you can configure it might still be, still be there but in with these pre predefined configurations this will still use the built-in real-time SQL monitoring information. So this historic uh, configuration set allows you to analyze SQL executions that were potentially uh, a long time in the past uh, executed um, but as long as they are still in your A.WR um, stored uh, and available XPlanAsh can still run an analysis on a, such an historic execution. And um, yeah, um, then you might have uh, uh, as many custom configuration sets in Xplan Ash as you like, and one of them is already there, which relates to the free Active Session History implementation, which is Sash. So um, the Sash configuration, which is automatically selected by the script if it detects that it's executed in the Sash repository owner schema, will then use the corresponding Sash views. So there's a, a V$ Active Session History view in the Sash repository owner, and a V$ SQL plan and a custom uh, display function Sash explain display function for displaying ex for formatted execution plan and so on and uh, real-time signal monitoring information in that case is not available so it won't be used in that case but as uh, e indicated by those uh, additional uh, configuration sets here uh, as I said uh, you could, uh, you could uh, configure explain ash to look into some custom repositories for those data sources and in a, another tutorial I plan to explain uh, how to customize explanation. It's uh, probably very simple if you look into the script header it's, you, you can see those different configurations so you just need to uh, copy that and uh, customize as required but as I said I plan to cover that in a separate tutorial part. The explain ash output based on ash consists of various sections and uh, before I go into the details of those sections I thought i will show you this overview here how to categorize these sections. So the great thing about active session history is that it collects <coughs> samples about all active sessions system-wide. So uh, you have a lot of information that can be analyzed. So um, explain Ash then uh, at first tries to find out the uh, start and end time, so the first and last sample of the particular SQL execution that it is supposed to analyze. So this defines the uh, begin and end of the samples analyzed. And then it also um, tries to understand which samples are related to the particular SQL execution, which is uh, done using the SQL ID, SQL exec start and SQL exec ID triple pair that uh, since 11G uniquely identifies uh, the sessions that relate to a particular SQL execution. So um, these samples that could be of uh, multiple sessions if we talk about parallel execution or if we talk about cross-instance parallel execution these uh, samples might even be from sessions from different instances of a rack environment. 
these uh, sessions are here now uh, shown in green, which means these are the sessions of those samples that uh, XPlanesh has identified to be related to the SQL execution analyzed. And most of the sections of XPlanesh are then obviously uh, different views, different aggregations and slicing and dicing into the same set of samples that have been analyzed uh, and identified to be related to this particular execution. But um, there are, are cases possible where the same sessions that have been identified actually uh, show different identifiers for the SQL ID, SQL exec start and SQL exec ID. Typically this is caused by recursive SQL, so if you for instance have a SQL execution that uses a PL SQL function that in turn then uh, uses recursive SQL again and if this recursive SQL spends significant time in the database then you will also see this reflected in the corresponding active session history samples that have then these different SQL identifiers. And uh, in order to cover this information as well XPlanEsh has separate sections uh, which are here sh uh, shown in, in this dark blue, separate sections that then uh, show information about these samples that um, are performed by the same sessions but have different I identifiers. Uh, the point is that in active session history there is no clear re relationship between the SQL executions. So from active session history you cannot tell whether the SQL executed is actually recursive activity or whether it's complete, completely unrelated SQL ID, SQL execution. Uh, there, it ha doesn't have to be, uh, it's not necessarily the case that this needs to be a recursive SQL activity. You could also have the case where an application has multiple cursors open and fetches from one cursor and then fetches in, uh, from the other cursor and then maybe again from the first cursor and, and so on. This will also have a pattern of different SQL ID identifiers for the same sessions. Um, and uh, this would be another uh, possibility how such a pattern can occur. But from uh, active session history you cannot tell whether this is completely unrelated SQL identifiers or whether this is uh, a recursive activity. There is a top level SQL ID uh, identifier in the active session history but if you have multiple levels of re recursion then this top level SQL ID cannot be used to identify whether this is recursive activity or not. So uh, in order to, to address this uh, properly Explain Ash uh, simply shows any activity that uh, is performed by those sessions within this identified time frame but has different SQL identifiers in separate sections and therefore if you want to understand the, the uh, complete activity of these uh, sessions while this uh, particular SQL execution took place you should also have a look at those sections uh, representing these other activities because uh, this activity will then miss from uh, these uh, other sections that are covering these green samples uh, and therefore uh, if you do not look at this other activity you might miss some significant part of the analysis and therefore um, I just uh, try to explain this here that you can have these um, se separate sections that cover these different activities of those sessions which is different from real-time SQL monitoring by the way in real-time SQL monitoring the instrumentation can actually differentiate between actual recursive activity and some unrelated SQL activity of the same sessions and as I explained this is not possible from a plain pure active session history point of view therefore this different approach that uh, explain as shows this recursive uh, sorry this the different activity in separate sections. And then of course um, you might have concurrent activities, so um, activities of other sessions that happen at the same time as the SQL execution analyzed and since this could also have significant um, 
impact on this particular SQL execution. Maybe um, you have a lot of I.O. activity, concurrent I.O. activity, or maybe you have uh, a lot of CPU activity concurrently, which might explain why this particular SQL execution behaved like it did. I also include some uh, additional information about um, any other active activity that happened during the SQL execution. So there are some other sections of the explanation output that cover that concurrent activity, which uh, is, for instance, not available if you look at the real-time SQL monitoring report. It doesn't tell you anything about the concurrent activity, but since I believe this can be helpful, there are some sections that also cover this uh, concurrent activity. And uh, this is just um, to give you an, an idea, this is a, a collection of uh, all these different sections that Xplan Ash uh, can show based on active session history information. And uh, as you can see, as I said, the majority of sections uh, covers these green parts. So this is about the samples of the sessions that are related to this particular SQL execution analyzed. And uh, you can see here, these are the sections that are related to the uh, other activities of these sessions um, during this SQL execution. So um, these are not too many, there are just two sections that cover that information. And we have a number of uh, other sections that uh, cover that concurrent activity. And uh, not all of these sections uh, will be shown always in the explanation output. Uh, this depends on a variety of uh, things. So uh, you, obviously you can use different options to um, control the output of explanation. So depending on the options uh, specified, a number of sections might be shown or not. Then it depends, of course, on the database version, whether this information is available or not in the active session history information. And then it depends on whether uh, this is serial execution, parallel execution, or cross-instance parallel execution. Of course, if it's, for instance, not parallel execution, there is no point in showing information about the parallel degree. So this section will simply be not uh, shown for a serial execution, just as an example. And then explain Ash has some built-in uh, logic that if for a particular section there won't be any information, for example, if there is no other act activity uh, detected in the sessions, then the section, um, then the section other act activity details simply won't be shown because there is no point in showing this section if it has already been determined that no information about other activity is uh, available in the se in the samples. So just as another example. So there's some um, logic and some uh, control and some dynamic behavior of XPlanAsh which sections will be shown or not. But this is just a summary to give you an idea though this uh, majority of sections will be about this uh, actual SQL execution, of course. And we have these sections for the other activity and you have the sections for the concurrent activity.